Okay, uh, thank you so much, Katie. And uh, I wanna thank everyone for being here on Christmas Eve Eve. Uh, it's been a big day for the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. Uh, in a little over 24 hours, we were able to find a replacement for the Southeastern Conference representative. And we were very, very happy to welcome Rutgers University to Jacksonville. Uh, we're so excited to be able to welcome them to great Florida weather, the beaches, the Marriott Sawgrass. Uh, we know they're gonna have a blast while they're here and we're just so happy that they really wanna be here. And to us, that makes a huge difference. So I'm gonna turn it over to John Deuce who I'd like to thank John for, he was in the, he was in the war room with us as we were going through all the different uh, scenarios. So John, I wanna thank you for your leadership and I'll turn it over to you to take over at this time. But thanks, thanks uh, Pat and thanks Coach Giano for being a part of the 77th annual Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. Well, thank you, Greg, and thanks for all your leadership too over the last 24 hours. Uh, it is our privilege to host the student athletes, coaches, administrative, administration, and fans of Rutgers Scarlet Knights in the 77th Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. The Scarlet Knights are led by head coach Greg Schiano, who is leading the Scarlet Knights to a bowl game for the seventh time, winning the last five trips. This will be the program's first bowl berth since 2014. In 2021, Rutgers University earned Big Ten road wins at Illinois and Indiana after completing a 3-0 non-conference slate. This marks the Scarlet Knights' first appearance in the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl and will be the third time they faced Wake Forest, previously in 97 and in 99, uh, which were both Wake wins. This time, I'd like to officially welcome Athletic Director Pat Dobbs and ask him to please uh, make some remarks. Pat? So thanks, John. Um, this is a great day for Rutgers University. Uh, we're really, really excited about the opportunity uh, ahead of us here with the Gator Bowl. Um, I believe the sixth oldest bowl uh, in the United States uh, in the great city of Jacksonville. So we can't, we are very excited to bring our, our team and our fans down to Jacksonville. Uh, we've already checked the weather forecast. It's going to be great. Uh, so that, that's good. Uh, I want my, I want to also extend my congratulations to John Curry, the AD at Wake Forest and to coach Clawson on their spectacular season. Uh, what a, a great representative from the ACC to be in this bowl. Um, I want to congratulate coach Shiano. Um, what, uh, the job that he's done in two short years is quite remarkable. And, um, you know, unfortunately uh, for AM, uh, obviously, I know they would you know, like to be here if they could. Um, and uh, so, you know, we, we appreciate the difficulty that they've had to go through. Um, but we appreciate now the opportunity that we've been presented. Uh, we can't wait to get down there to, to the great city of Jacksonville uh, and uh, have a great game on, on New Year's Eve, uh, Gator Bowl. That doesn't get better than that. Thank you, Pat. Really appreciate it. Uh, now we'd like to ask uh, Coach to uh, make some remarks. Uh, welcome, Greg. Thank you, John. And uh, Greg, I appreciate the, everything you've done today to help this process through. Uh, really excited about coming down to the Gator Bowl and to Jacksonville and uh, what great history to play in this storied bowl game uh, in a great city. We're, we're very, very excited. Our guys uh, just got off a, a, a Zoom call with them and our team is, is thrilled, can't wait, and uh, are ready to get back to work. So we are, are really looking forward to it. Coach Clawson uh, did a tremendous job, has done a tremendous job at Wake Forest. We go back 30-some-odd uh, years. We're very close and uh, look forward to competing with his team again in a, in a tremendous, tremendous venue and a tremendous bowl game. So uh, I know our team's excited. we got a lot of work to do, but uh, can't wait to do it. Great, thank you. Katie? Okay, so we'll take some questions. Um, we'll start with Cole Pepper. All right, thank you, Katie. Um, this is for both Greg McGarity um, and then a follow-up for, for Coach Ciano. Greg, can you kind of walk us through the important beats uh, here over the last 48 hours of how this happened to go from Texas A&M pulling out to, to getting Rutgers approved and in? What were sort of the key, the key moments there? Well, one key moment was Monday, late Monday, when we found out A&M was having issues, which certainly put up a red flag uh, in the COVID world. And then 
to find out uh, Wednesday, which was yesterday at uh, right around noon or so that A&M was not able to field a team and then to be able to pivot and uh, just tremendous cooperation from the NCAA, the football oversight committee, uh, the big 10 staff, uh, John Curry, Michael Sullivan, you know, Ty Halpin from the NCAA and uh, just everybody working together and really going to the, uh, the protocol in the NCAA about uh, running through the list of teams that were five and seven and had the uh, highest APR uh, rate ranking. So it was a process that certainly the NCAA facilitated for us. And uh, we had a lot of reach out. Uh, a lot of teams reached out to us. We, you know, we could not invite anyone. We didn't have the right to invite anyone because the NCAA was going to determine that. But once uh, Rutgers, which was at the top of the list, uh, said they were interested uh, we were able to huddle, and uh, here we are with Rutgers. Uh, and so this has been a 24, well, let's see, a 25-hour period here that has been uh, uh, really hectic. But it all ended up great, and Jacksonville is going to have a great game on the 31st. Okay, um, Keith Sargent. Hey, this is for either Pat or uh, Greg Shiano. Uh, um, I, the, regarding the APR, um, I, I know after Greg left the first time, uh, it, it was really, really good. Um, and I know, Greg, you've always emphasized um, the importance of it beyond a tiebreaker scenario. But how much importance did you place on getting it improved after you arrived? Well, I, I think, uh, Keith, you're exactly right. That was always something that was very important because it what it represents. And that's success in the classroom. And that's, you know, they're student athletes in the student part definitely comes first but uh chris ash who you know was the coach before did an excellent job and i have no idea if it was the numbers that are from when he was coach or since we took over uh but i think that's been more of a rutgers uh identity in the football program is that that's the way that things are going to be run so i'm awfully glad that uh, that that is where we are um because you're right it it was nice to have it be whatever you called it, a tiebreaker, but uh, more importantly, it's about the academic success of our student athletes. Yeah, the only thing I'll add is, um, you know, it's one of the things that our new president, uh, Jonathan Holloway, has stressed is academics are going to be first. And Greg set the standard, uh, and we've seen that across all of our programs. So I know our president's really proud, and you know, this is this is what the NCA is about, right? Is uh, in instances like this, let's reward those schools um, that do put academics first. So uh, I think that's something to be celebrated today as well. James Crutch. He may come back. It looks like James. Can you hear us? Chris Eisman. Um, just for uh, Greg Ciano, um, what are your next steps now in terms of getting the players who may, may be uh, left back to campus and, and when you can start practicing and I guess how many practices you think, you know, you're going to be able to get in? Well, it's a good question, Chris. I mean, we, we have been working on this in, in the uh, event that it did come to fruition and our guys, I want to make sure, you know, they've, they've had plans and I want to make sure that our players can, be with their families on Christmas morning. We need the time as coaching staff to put together a game plan. So our coaches are in right now and, and we've been working on Wake Forest here for the last 24 hours in case. And um, so we're, we're, we're moving along pretty good and they'll get back here Christmas night and then we will get started. And it won't be very much more than a traditional game week, but uh Coach Butler, you know, who's been with me the entire time, our, uh, I think the finest strength coach in America, he's, you know, we worked. The good thing is we had the opportunity to train the first week after our season was over. We thought we still had an opportunity to go to a bowl game. So we trained that week. We trained the week after, and it was a great week of training. And then when we got into final exams, it was voluntary. But, I mean, by just watching who was around, it was pretty, pretty well attended. So I think – being that we have such a late final exam schedule here and, you know, we didn't officially get done with school until the 22nd. So um, our guys haven't been gone too long, 
And uh, I'm not worried at all about that issue. Uh, Jay has got a coach Butler has got a program that they're doing the next two days at home uh, to do some change of direction things and, and get themselves ready. And then we'll ease into it, get into a game week and then, then go play the game on Friday. And we're looking forward to it. All right, we'll go back to James. Greg and Pat, I, I, my screen froze for a second. I'm not sure if you guys mentioned this. The guys who have declared for the draft who have signed with agents, do they have to receive a waiver to play in the game? And is that possible for them to receive that waiver? Yeah, they do have to receive a waiver. And the ones that choose to do it, uh, you know, I've already spoken with compliance and we're, we're involved in that right now. And I think being that it is such a unique situation, I don't see there being any problem with that, but you know, we'll take it as we, as we do it. Um, Will Brown. Good, good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, so my question is for, for coach Hobbs, excuse me, for Mr. Hobbs. Um, if you would just describe the logistics of how you're going to get your team down to Jacksonville um, over the next, uh, yeah, how you're going to get your team down to Jacksonville and the logistics of how you did that and um, kind of preparing for this opportunity if it arrived. So I have a whole team of people right now that are making phone calls and uh, working on arrangements, working with airlines and various charter services. Uh, we'll get down there. Bruce Beck. This is for Greg Schiano. Hey, Coach, um, congrats. It, it's been a turbulent 22 months in this COVID sports world, and yet your guys have made a commitment. You've shown effort and unselfishness throughout. Do you think this is validation for your kids for, for what they went through and the way they comported themselves? I couldn't agree more, Bruce. I think that, uh, you know, getting a new coach and three months into it, having COVID hit and not being able to coach your guys, and then having your season canceled, then reinstated in mid October. Uh, this, this group of players has been through a lot. And I just got done telling them that on our team meeting is that, uh, you know, sometimes opportunities come your way and we always talk about it. There's no such thing as missed opportunities because someone's always going to take it. And in this instance, we're the, we're the person who gets to take it. And we're really looking forward to, uh, to going out there and making the most of it. We know our opponent is really good and they're well coached. And as I said, I've known Dave for a long time, so it's going to be quite a challenge. They're a really well coached, good football team. But uh, as Pat said, we'll get on that plane. We'll, we'll be down there. It'll be, a, it'll be a good game. Steve Politi. Hey, hey, Greg, you've had 25 days since you you played Maryland. Um, you know, the, a lot of the players have scattered, started thinking about going to pro. Some You've had changes in the coaching staff. I'm just curious what, you, what makes you think the team can be ready in this shorter period of time when Wake Forest has obviously been preparing for it for several weeks? Well, I think it's, it's two, two parts, uh, Steve. I think, number one, physically, if I didn't think we would be able to, I wouldn't do it. And, uh, and no matter how much... You know, football coaches want to coach games and football players want to play in games. I mean, that's why we do it. And it's, it's an incredible sport because it's the only sport where you practice exponentially more than you get to play the game. And we are really excited about playing one more game with this 2021 team because this 21, 2021 team is really the 2020 team as well, right? Most everybody came back uh, with the COVID year and, as, as was mentioned, I think, as Bruce said, I, I think this is a deserving opportunity. Now, as things were unfolding yesterday, I certainly did a straw poll to make sure that that's what they wanted and wasn't just what their coach wanted. Um, but I knew from a physical standpoint, we we're fine because of the, the nature of how we trained in the month of December. Um, as far as the mental part of the game, I'm sure there'll be a couple things, especially for the younger players, the ones that were just there you know, the first year, we'll have to recalibrate a little bit. But I think with the time we have, uh, we're not going to try to reinvent the wheel and we're going to go out and play, you know, with great energy and great excitement and not make it real complicated. And 
see where the chips fall. And I think our guys, you know, are going to play with great effort. And you know what, when you do that, you give yourself a chance. Great. Can I just follow up? Is, is there any concern from your end about your own COVID issues with players leaving campus and with, with the numbers where they are in New Jersey? I hope not. You know, Steve is, I mean, it's, it's all across the country right now. So, but our guys are, we're, we're a fully vaccinated team and I'm confident that, um, that with that and being extra careful when we get everybody back, that um, that we'll be we'll be okay. I'm Tina. Hi, Katie. Thank you so much. Um, this question is for Coach Chiano. Coach, um, you mentioned how this was maybe something that you were expecting, which is why you guys trained after your last game, and that the players were excited. And I know it is, it's hard to gauge in these virtual meetings, but could you take us a little bit more into the emotion when this became a reality? If certain things maybe some of your players have said, or just what you and your coaching staff, how you reacted? Well, I think everybody was cautiously optimistic because we had gone through this once already, like really twice. We lost the, the final game, so we have no one to blame but ourselves, right? We had an opportunity to make ourselves bowl eligible, but we didn't do that. So then that, that evening, we all watched the scoreboard because we knew what had to happen for us to be able to play. And then there was a situation that arose as the week went on the following week that there might be an opening in one of the games. So it wasn't until Friday of that week, I believe it was Friday, that we finally got the it's not going to happen. Um, so then it was, you know, from that point forward, it was really training. A lot of the guys that were planning to go to the NFL have been training because that's, you know, obviously they're getting ready for uh, workout days and combine and those kind of things. So uh, I'm comfortable with really comfortable with that part of it. And uh, in, I really didn't have to, you know, I called some guys when it first broke and I said, look, if this happens, what do you think? But then my phone started blowing up when our players saw it. I mean, they were they were texting me and, you know, gator emojis and all this kind of stuff. So they're fired up. Trust me, this is a team that will be uh, ready to play. And if there's guys who, you know, I, I get, you know, I've been an NFL head coach and I've, I know the business side of the game. If there's guys who choose not to, I understand that. I, you know, there's no no hard feelings there. But we will come down with a team that who, whoever hits that field is going to be play really, really hard and uh, and play the way we, that uh, we play at Rutgers. So uh, I know they're they're thrilled to have the opportunity, especially in a bowl of you know this magnitude. And and uh, you know we're going to come down and, and have a good showing. Thank you. And we have time for just two more, so we'll go Tom and Andrew. Tom, I'll let you go first. Thank you. Um, I have two quick questions. Greg, the first day you think you'll be able to practice is Tuesday or Monday? No, we're going to, we're going to go out. We're going to ramp up slowly. So we're going to, uh, the guys will come back Saturday night and then Christmas night, you know, so they spend time with their family on Christmas, then get back. And, you know, 90% of our guys are a two hour drive from campus. So it's not a big issue. Uh, and then we'll get going on Sunday and a lot of Sunday will be, more mental and meetings than it'll be physical, but we'll go out and do some stuff just to kind of ease into it. And then we'll kind of escalate each day. And, uh, you know, I'm sure practice will feel a lot better when you get down in the seventies than it will up here. So we're looking forward to that as well. So, uh, we'll kind of build and ramp up to the game. Okay. And the other question I have is for Greg, um, teams usually make money on these games. Do you have to divide the pot in thirds or does, does the A&M still get something or is it split between Rutgers and Wake Forest or what? Well, uh, obviously uh, the SEC would not receive any benefits from our game since they didn't play. Uh, but it also affects a lot of other uh, dynamics that we have going on. So our financial model uh, kind of, we had to start over again because it's a different model, uh, different teams, uh, Certain that's not an SEC representative, so that changes some of the dynamics that involves with our sponsors and things like that. So we basically had to start over and certainly work to where we could provide the best, uh, uh, as much resources as we could to, uh, to the representative, to, to Rutgers. So we're fine tuning that. We're waiting to get some cost estimates from uh, uh, Pat and his staff so we can 
sort of formulate a, uh, 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 a financial opportunity here, but, but certainly we want to be fair to everyone, but everything is kind of last minute. So, you know, we, our main thing is making sure the, that these student athletes and staff have a great time and they certainly will a lot of great things in Jacksonville. So we're focused on that and we'll deal with the dollars uh, at some point in time. Thank you. And Andrew. All right, good afternoon. This is a question for Coach Shiano. As others have said, this current sports landscape, there's so many different variables you have to account for. As part of your game planning, you're going up against a team who's made a bowl game six years in a row. So you're going up against a veteran team. Is there anything that you can lean to from what you've learned, this current dynamic, as well as your previous bowl experience that you think is going to help for this coming Friday? Well, as I mentioned, uh, Andrew, you're exactly right. This is a program that's established. Dave and I um, have been close friends for a long time. We visit and uh, share ideas and share football, share program building over the years. Um, but I definitely will lean on our past experiences. We've had some really successful bowl games and bowl trips. So that coupled with the, the work of everybody on Pat's staff and my staff, um, I think we'll make this a great trip for the players. I think we will get ourselves ready to play the very best that we can. And then, as I always say to the guys, you know, you, you throw it out there. And as long as you play your best, you just see where the chips, where they land. And that's what we're going to do. Um, we're a developing program. You know, I was here for 11 years the first time. And, uh, you know, not very often do you get a chance to come back to your dream job. I got a chance to do it. And this is a big step for us um, to be able to play in a bowl like this. Uh, is very, very exciting for, for Rutgers, for Rutgers football, for New Jersey. So we're, we're thrilled and can't wait to do it. Thank you, Coach. Any final remarks from Greg McGarity or Chairman Deuce? No, I'm just I'm so glad this is settled. We can uh, have a good night of sleep and not have to worry about if we're going to uh, have two teams. And so the great thing is we have two teams that want to be in Jacksonville. So that is great. And so things couldn't be better. And thanks to the staff and everyone for helping make it happen. Uh, it's been a total team effort. Thank you. Yep. And Pat and Greg, we're looking forward to hosting you and your uh, teams and staff uh, and can't wait to welcome you to Jacksonville. Thanks, Greg. And thanks, John. We're really, really excited. Can't wait to get down there either.